comedians for you tonight. Yes. And uh, my missus said to me earlier, what they like? And I'll tell you what I told her. Oh, the bloody hell do I know? I found them on the internet. Stop <laughs> fucking nagging me, for Christ's sake. Anyway, so there we are. If you, there may be some bad language, so if you're sensitive, it may not be the best night for you. Anyway, we're going to kick off tonight with the man who inspired this whole evening. Will you please welcome local boy, Kev! Yeah. 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 I love this local boy all the way from fucking England. <laughs> but I've been here 14 years. Anyway, I don't do a lot of talking, so I'm going to do some jokes for you. Okay. <laughs> An old lady goes into a sex shop. She says, to do, 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 Honey, this big? She says, oh, we've got a many sizes. We've got them small, medium, care, sorry, grande. <laughs> she says, do 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 you have any super turbocharged ones? She said, love, we have every speed you can imagine. She went, ah, 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 how'd you turn them off? <laughs> hey, <you. laughs> What's the difference between my broken watch and a lesbian? My broken watch hasn't got a strap on. <laughs> I'm going to start a moment now, I wouldn't do it honestly. I'm not the only person to take up a com well, comedy, if that's what you think I'm doing. Uh, any member uh, Boy George? Yes. Now, anger management lessons Boy George has been going through, but... Uh, Luckily, after anxiety and depression, he's taken up stand-up comedy. So yes, he's now a karma karma comedian. <laughs> okay then, I took the wife out uptown for a meal recently, and uh, the waiter came over and he went, Hello, can I take a drink order please? I love Mexican food, you see. And, uh, <laughs> I said, can I have a pot of lager for me, and can I have a side of black for the missus? No problem. Anyway, she started playing footsie everywhere. I oh, don't start getting erotic, Joe, whatever you do. But she started anyway. He brought the drinks back. He went, I'll be back in two minutes to take your food or there. Well, after that, she was ready. She was like a sponge after bath time. She was that wet, okay? Now, she was up for it. To cut a long story short, when she come back, the bloke come back for the food order, I ordered a blind up with steak and chips and she got towed in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> a bloke goes up to a girl in the bar, he says, excuse me love, can I buy you a drink? She said, oh please, yeah, that'd be lovely. Um, can I have a pot of lager for me and a uh, young lady would like a Prosecco? I don't know. Can I have a Prosecco? Why? Got a Prosecco. He said, can I ask your name? She said, my name's Carmen. He said, what a lovely name, that is Carmen. Was it your mother or your father that named you Carmen on the day you were born? She said, it was neither. She said, my name's actually Amanda, and on my 18th birthday, I changed my name to Carmen to represent the two things I love most in life, which is cars and men. He said, that's beautiful. She said, what's your name? He said, beer tits. <laughs> A teacher said to the class, I want you to give me a story now with a moral to the story. A girl at the front said, Miss, I have one. She's quite posh me. My dad is a farmer, we live on a farm. Every Sunday, he gathers all the eggs up and we drive into town and he sells the eggs at the market. Did you ever <laughs> But we were running late on Sunday. She said, put all the eggs in the basket, we got in the back, got in the truck, we started going down towards town. In a pothole, all the eggs come out and splattered all over the road. The teacher went, no. Oh. But what's the moral to the story? She said, well, don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> That's not the end. Shut up. It's not the end of the joke. <laughs> Next girl said, I got one, miss. I got one. She said, I also live on a farm. My dad is also a farmer, but he sells livestock. He sells chickens, baby chickens, okay? He took an order and took the money for 12 chickens. He put the 12 eggs in the incubator, and only eight survived. Oh. Only eight survived. Oh. 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 
The teacher said, what's the moral to the story? She said, well, don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Johnny in the back said, Miss, I've got one for you. She said, what's that? She said, well, Miss, my granddad was a pilot in the war. He was flying his plane and he got shot down. He's on his way down to the ground and he panicked. So he pressed eject, he went up in the sky, the parachute come up, and all he had with him was his machine gun over his arm, his machete in his pocket, and a litre of whiskey. He thought, I'm gonna die. So he drank the litre of whiskey down in one, he landed on the ground, and there was a hundred enemy soldiers in front of him. So he got his machine gun, he shot 70 of them. He got his machete, he killed 20 of them. And the other 10, he killed with his bloody bare hands. The teacher was like, that's the most amazing story I've ever heard in my life. But what's the moral of the story? He said, never mess with my granddad when he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lady who went to the doctor. She said, doctor, I'm having trouble. He said, what's your problem? She said, I have the worst smelly downstairs you've ever smelt in your life. I had to wait for her four jokes in. The doctor said, don't worry, love. A lot of women have it, and apparently in the hand post, yes. And uh, I can't smell the balloons are hiding in the Febreze. Okay. So, he said, go over, get on the couch, take down your drawers, and I'll have a look for you. Don't panic, it's natural. She said, I've tried salt baths. I've tried, tried Femme Fresh. Even Febreze, I've tried everything. Don't worry, just get on the couch. Get on the couch. She takes down her drawers. He went, get he said, get out! We've got patients, get, just... He said, pull them up, get out. Get out. He said, we've got people leaving this place. People leaving here. You, medical science can't cure you. Just get out. She walks out crying. She decided to go private, so she went to Harley Street. She got to Harley Street, and she paid all the big bucks. She said, my downstairs doesn't smell too good. It's very emotional for me, she said. I went to a doctor. He asked me to leave. Please help. He said, okay. He said, get on the couch. Not a problem. Medical science will cure you. She takes down the drawers and he goes, get out! That's the word! Smell it not. Just get out. Just take it and go. Have your money back and go, he said. Just go. The only thing that will help you will be God. God and praying is the only thing that will help you. Even washing it and bathing it in holy water, I don't much think he's going to help you. Just go. She leaves. She cries. She walks home. All through London crying. She's outside St. Paul's Cathedral. She thinks, shall I do this? She walks in. She goes up to the altar. She's sobbing. She gets down her hands and knees. She puts her hands together and starts praying. Suddenly she hears, ping. She looks round. At her knees, there's a six-inch rusty nail. Looks behind her, no one. She to no one. She looks up, and Jesus Christ is on the cross like this. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on, breaking news in Merthyr. There's a house behind Merthyr Library just being raided. They found 300 machine guns, 400 hand grenades, and a million pounds worth of Class A drugs. Residents are said to be shocked because they never knew there was a library in Merthyr. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of house raids, Kermit the Frog's house has been... Actually, should be Pat, should I? Kermit, Kermit the Frog's house has been raided by the police, and they found 300 DVDs of him fornicating with Miss Piggy, and over a thousand pictures of him doing things with other frogs that he shouldn't be doing. A police spokesman said it's the worst case of frogs porn they've ever seen. <laughs> I will pass round uh, the explanation for these jokes after. Miss Piggy, why can't Miss Piggy count to 70? Because when she gets to 69, she gets a frog in her throat. I'm available for kids' parties if you want me. Actually, talking to gigs, I'm available next week. I'm doing a charity gig in Betis for people that can't reach orgasm. You're all welcome, but if you can't come, let me know. <laughs> no? <laughs> My wife's here tonight. It was her birthday last week. I bought her a pug dog. Fat, smelly thing with bulging eyes, but the pug dog likes her. <laughs> Here's the thing for the blokes. 
if your wife's at the front door moaning and moaning and your dog's at the back door woofing and woofing, yeah. which one do you let in first? <laughs> the answer's the dog, because at least it'll shut up when he gets in the fucking door, isn't it? <laughs> the women's, listen, women's not laughing, are they? <laughs> oh, Car oh, now listen, we've got a birthday there. And Caroline, your birthday's mon Monday? It's Monday, Caroline, I know. You can't ask a lady your age, so Caroline, how much do you weigh? <laughs> Okay, no worries. <laughs> They're the bar stewards, not me, okay. <laughs> What's the difference between a peeping tum and a pickpocket? A pickpocket snatches your watch, a peeping tom watches your snatch. <laughs> Two blokes are walking through the jungle, one says, I need a shit. I need a shit. <laughs> He said, but you can't go here, it's a jungle. He said, but I, I, no, no, I'm gonna go. He said, you can't. He said, I'm going to do it. He went over, he went and his trousers, and down he went. He was like a flock of sparrows, right? Because obviously he's in the jungle. Bad. Suddenly he starts screaming out in pain. His mate said, what's wrong? He said, I've been bitten, I've been bitten. He said, what do you mean you've been bitten? He said, I've been bitten. He looked across, he moved the bush out of the way, a bloody great gravel snake. Like the Bloody hell, yeah. <laughs> so he said, see, Rob's up for it. He's up for it. Don't panic, you're not going to die. He said, I'm going to run into the, the nearest village. It's 10 minutes away. I'll be back, don't move. So he runs to the village, he gets there. There's one doctor who's delivering a baby, and there's complications. Ooh. <laughs> the Welsh are so caring, okay. <laughs> complications, it's always, I don't mean have a baby, it's not a problem. Anyway. He said, don't panic. He said, I'll give you my scalpel. Take it. Where... <laughs> Rob, you know. Where the snake is bitten, there'll be two red marks. Get the scalpel, cut us cross over each mark. And each side of the arsehole. He said, cover the arsehole with your mouth. And suck as hard as you can. For two minutes. Get all the poison in your mouth, spit it out. And then go back. Squeeze the arsehole and then cover the arsehole and squeeze and squeeze and suck and suck for two minutes. Otherwise your friend will die. He runs back to his friend. His friend's on the floor like that. He said, what did the doctor say? He said, the doctor said you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two minutes is up, so I'm gonna leave you with, <laughs> with this one. I love that one. Let me have a slurp anyway. Okay, so. A little boy says to his dad, Dad, will you take me out for the day? The dad said, if you want to go out for the day, my boy, I will take you out for the day. He said, we take you to the seaside. He said, you want to go to the seaside? I'll take you to the seaside. You want to go out for the day? I'll take you out for the day. He said, Dad, will you buy me a bucket and spade? He said, but you want to go out for the day? I'm taking you out for the day. He said, you want to go out to the seaside? I've taken you to the seaside. Bucket and spade? You can have a bucket and spade. Dad, can I have a donkey ride? He said, well, you wanted to go out for the day. I've taken you out for the day. So you want to go to the seaside? I've taken you to the seaside. You want a donkey ride? You had bucket and spade? You have what you want. You can have a donkey ride. A sign saying donkey's for sale. He says, Dad, will you buy me a donkey? He said, buy you a donkey? You want to go out for the day? He said, I took you out for the day. You want to go to the seaside? I've taken you to the seaside. He said, you want a bucket and spade? I bought you a bucket and spade. He said, you want a donkey ride? You've had a donkey ride. He said, I'll buy you a donkey, not a problem. He said, Dad, you bought me a donkey. Can I, uh, can I name him Tosser? <laughs> the dad said, you wanted to go out for the day. I took her out for the day. He said, you want to go to the seaside? I took her to the seaside. You want a bucket of spade? I bought you a bucket of spade. You want a donkey ride? I bought you a donkey ride. You want a donkey? I bought you a, not you a donkey, but I bought you a donkey. <laughs> He said, you want to call him Tosser? You call him Tosser. He said, Dad, one last thing. Will you build him a stable? He said, build him a stable. He said, well, you want to go out for the day? I took you out for the day. You want to go to the seaside? I took you to the seaside. He said, you want a bucket and I bought you a bucket and spade. He said, you want a donkey ride? I got you a donkey ride. I want to buy me a donkey. I bought you a donkey. You want to call him Tosser? You called him Tosser. Build him a stable, not a problem. Anyway, they go home. It's been a long day. Because the boy's been out for the day, he's been to the seaside, he's had a bucket and spade, he's been on the seaside. 
Anyway, he goes to bed, the dad's built the stable, all is good, everyone's knackered. They go there, bad weather comes in, there's a big storm, there's thunder lightning, you name it, it's all happening. This little boy, he's scared. He gets up, he looks out the window, lightning strikes the metal pole, sets fire to the stable. Tosser comes running out, kicking the doors, jumping around the garden, not happy. He jumps over the back fence into the big field and starts running off. The boy screams and he runs into his dad's room. He said, Dad, Dad, Tosser's off, Tosser's off. He went, you wanted to go out for the day, guys? You wanted to go out for the day. You've been running on me and saying, you ain't much.